All right, so Paul, we see that there's some very interesting patterns in the asteroid belt. It's not just a random assortment of mess. So what does this actually mean for the asteroids themselves? Well, there's more patterns than just the gaps. Oh. Here, what we've got is we're plotting the distance from the Sun. Yep. There's Jupiter just out beyond five. There's the Earth and Mars. Yep. And we're now plotting the orbital inclination. Okay. Now, if you remember, most things in the solar system are orbiting in the same plane. And that's zero degrees? That's zero degrees. Inclination is tilted, so it might go up and down below it. And so 90 degrees would be kind of Over on the top. top. That's yeah. right. And what you can see is all the planets have very low inclinations. Yep. They're all pretty much in the same plane, apart from Pluto, which isn't really a planet, we'll come back to <laughs> later. But the asteroids are not. Yes, yeah, so there's very distinct... So we can see the gaps here, but I mean... What's but also, that? Yeah, what's that? Yeah, there, there are distinct clumps, um, but the main thing you can see is the inclinations go up to, there are lots of things that are 20 degrees, 20, almost 40, yeah, sometimes and a few even, even a few, higher, yeah. and there are very distinct patterns here, exactly. horizontal bars. So it's not just randomly even distributed, there's clearly almost like freeway traffic going on with these things. Yes, yeah, so most of them are going above and below the plane. So they're not just orbiting in the same flat plane that everything else is doing. This means you can't just go above the asteroid belt to avoid it, because the asteroid right. belt is thick, yeah, okay. unlike all the other planets. Um, here, we're plotting now, this is the inclination again, so how yeah. much tilt it is. There's also the eccentricity, which is how much non-circular it is. So, so the solar system is doing a Almost zero degree yeah. eccentricity. Yes, yeah, so you remember we draw, did the orbits yep. and we showed you the true orbit of the Earth and a perfect circle, and you couldn't tell the difference. That's right. We're just, I was just slightly fooled. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, the Earth and all the other planets again, apart from Pluto, which it behaves much more like an asteroid, hint, hint, <laughs> um, are in very circular orbits, but these are not. 5%, 10%, 15 20 25%. And it's, they're at different angles as well. So not only are they not circles, but they're not even straight circles, they're angled circles. And they're not uniformly spread, there are clumps. Yes. Clumps with the same inclination and eccentricity. So like, yeah, you have this very distinct band at an inclination of a few degrees, but that spreads over a few and eccentricity. Now, if you look at this band in space, they're not all going to be close together, they're going to yep. be all around the solar system. The only reason we think they're related to each other is they've all got very similar orbits. So they kind of all follow the similar path around the sun. They're tilted by the same amount of the same eccentricity, though in yep. fact they might be in quite different parts of the asteroid belt at any given time and usually are. Yep. So something very odd going on here. More puzzles. Why has the asteroid belt got such a low mass? Yeah. So we formed out of a protoplanetary disk, yep. as we've talked about. That's right. And so you'd have got all the material orbiting around the sun. And you'd think that, let's say, a planet forms here. It could be made up of all the material that was originally in this band. Yep. And then the next band would form the next planet. And so on. And the next band form the next planet. Yep. And so as the bands are bigger as you go out, because they go all the way around a larger area, you expect the mass to go up. Yep. Until eventually you start getting into outer regions where the protoplanetary nebula is very tenuous. Yep. So normally you'd expect planets, you have regularly spaced planets getting bigger as you go out. Then you get a sudden big jump when you cross the snow line. Yep. Um, so once you get out beyond about two or three astronomical units, the planets should get much bigger because they can now form of ice, not yep. just rock. So what you'd expect is regularly spaced planets getting more massive as you go out, and then jumping up a bit. So wait, you said the asteroid belt, or most of them, is beyond Mars. Yes. Not quite. So asteroid Jupiter. belt's kind of straddling the snow lines. So yeah, the yeah. should have ice, the inner prop maybe not. But So it shouldn't be that non-massive. There should be a lot yeah. of stuff there. So here what I've done is I've plotted distance from the Sun in astronomical units against the mass. Yep. And so you've got Mercury, Venus, Earth, and sure enough, they're roughly evenly spaced and going up. Yep. Then Mars, Goes Mars down. is small. And then we go down again. And the asteroid, but this is the total mass of all the asteroids. But then we shoot back up. Yes. And then we kind of go down again. So if you ignore this, it kind of makes sense. It rises up, jumps up to the snow line, and then, and then goes down. fades away as you get into the outer parts of the solar system. So something's going on with Mars and the asteroid belt. So this whole region here seems to be seriously deficient in mass. Okay. So what's going on? Most simulations have Mars much more massive than we observe it to be. It should be bigger than the Earth and Venus. That's right, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Based on everything we just studied, Mars should be bigger than Earth, not nearly as big as Jupiter, because it's not quite at the snow line. It could just be a fluke. Okay. I mean, remember we had this last stage with all these random rocks orbiting around and bumping into one another, and it could just happen that the large rocks end up somewhere else. Okay. But fewer than 1% of simulations have Mars coming out as low mass as it's actually observed. So most simulations have Mars equal to or larger than the Earth. Okay. And the asteroid belt, why is that so small? And the bottom line is we don't know, but there is a theory called the Grand Tack Theory. Okay. Now the basic idea is 
when Jupiter first formed and the planets were first forming, yep. there was still this protoplanetary disk with lots of gas in it. Yep. And people started realising about 20 years ago that when you have a big Jupiter-like thing in a disk which still has gas, because the sun has not yet blown the gas away, it's going to produce ripples. Okay. So here's a simulation of Jupiter orbiting around inside the gas disk. Yep. And what you can see is because of its mass, it's going to perturb the gas disk. So it's and creating these, yeah, these, ripples. These, these swirls and these ripples as they go out. And eventually, in this case, it'll open up a gap in the disk. And this has become a very fruitful field of research, studying the interaction between these planets. These planets are still accumulating more mass. It's falling in. So Jupiter's getting bigger and bigger here. But, but the gap occurs closest to Jupiter. Yeah. But it turns out um, that these ripples actually pull back on a planet when it forms. OK. So the planet may have formed the particular radius, but it's going to be pulled out by the gravity of all these ripples near it. Yep. And that pull can sometimes make the planet move inwards yep. or move outwards, depending on the exact width, the, the mass of what's inside and what's outside. So, so the planets can migrate. So where yes. they end up is not necessarily where they started. That's right. Now, this is very important for exoplanets to talk about in the exoplanets course, because we see lots of things like Jupiter in orbits much closer than Mercury. And the normal idea is they, we can't form things that big because it's inside the snow line. Yep. So we form them out and then migrate them in. In our own solar system, we don't have something like Jupiter inside of Mercury's orbit. But what some people think is what's called the grand tack hypothesis, which is that Jupiter is currently at a bit beyond five astronomical units, actually formed at about three and a half astronomical units, okay. a bit closer in. Yep. So a lot of the mass that's missing is in Jupiter. Uh -huh. Right on the edge of that asteroid belt. And it actually moved in okay, uh, because it set up these ripples in the still existing protoplanetary disk, which moved it in yep. uh, to about one and a half astronomical units, where Mars is at the moment. Yep. And then something happened. You were also forming Saturn further out, and Saturn was also moving in. Yep. And Saturn and Jupiter came into an orbital resonance. Uh, they locked on to integer ratios. Yep. And this, it turns out, changed the ripples. Okay. Uh, and it actually caused them both to reverse and move out. So we think that they started to migrate in, got in sync, and then it's actually kind of pushed them to migrate back out. But it left where everything else was in the inner solar system where we see it today. That's right. What this meant is that Jupiter moved right through what's currently the asteroid belt and all the lumps of rock that were forming there that if left to themselves might have accumulated into a big planet. Yep. Most of them end up in Jupiter and the rest end up scattered all over the place. Okay. And that's why they're in these eccentric orbits. That's why there are so few of them. Yep. And that's why they're eccentric and inclined orbits. It's because Jupiter did its stroll through, throw <laughs> things around, <laughs> stroll back, just leaving like a wasteland behind it. And ignoring the problem. Yeah. Now, we don't know this happened. Yep. It seems plausible. The mathematics kind of works out that it could move in and move out. Uh, and it does explain a lot of properties of the asteroid belt. Okay. So maybe that explains why they are at such a range of inclinations, eccentricities, and why the mass is just so low. That's kind of why the asteroid belt is there at all. Okay.